Hey everyone, today we're doing something really special. We're actually shooting Robert Downey Jr.'s cars. We're shooting three of them. Actually, we're shooting six of them, yep. but we're gonna split it up because it's so many of them and there's so much to talk about. Those are the electric ones. We'll talk about those in the next episode, but right now we'll talk about three of these, actually six of them that he mm -hmm. built for his show, Downey's Dream Cars. And I have my really good buddy, Rob Carlson, who used to be a Formula Drift driver, but we've shot together a bunch and he's actually mm -hmm. taking care of these cars. Yep. Going over some safety protocol, making sure they're good for the new home they're going to in the sweepstakes. Yeah, so let's talk about the sweepstakes real quick. Okay. So this is all for charity, for his foundation. Correct. Each of these were on his show. Each one was like a build and each mm -hmm. one was like a challenge. But now each of these are going to a new home. Correct. What is the foundation? If you uh, can tell me a little bit so about it. So Footprint Coalition is turning these gross polluters into eco-friendly, hybrid, better for the ecosystem, each in their own unique way. You know, after this process of him taking his personal vehicles, some were his personal vehicles, the Mercedes was his mom's vehicle, you know, the K10 was his personal vehicle that was supercharged. Taking them all and making them more up-to-date friendly, and now he's gonna sweepstakes them off to help his foundation to basically help help the world. He's being very environmentally conscious. All right, I like that. So maybe let's start with the craziest thing here. What is this? This is a 1985 Chevrolet El Camino that has been swapped with a new 2.7 liter four-cylinder turbo Chevy Silverado 1500 LT full motor trans. So this has solar on the roof that helps charge the EV bikes that are in the back. So as you drive or when you're parked, they both can charge the EV setup. So it's a very unique way to kind of do a twist on an El Camino and have a motor in it that gets, you know, 20 plus miles a gallon and also 410 foot pounds of torque out of a four cylinder. So it's a very unique setup. It's an eight speed transmission, which just makes the gearing feel wild. Like it's fun to drive, has all the new nuances of suspension to feel like you can be comfortable on the freeway. Okay, so it's interesting. D do you think it actually makes more power than it w originally made? I think that it makes, it definitely makes more power and more torque by probably 20% out of a four cylinder. So from the V8 that was in it, let's say it had a Chevy 350, you know, pushing 350 horsepower, 320 foot pounds of torque crank. Now it's, 410 foot pounds of torque. Let's take a look at the engine. It's interesting because I've had a chance to see a couple of the episodes and it's really interesting how he's able to tie so many things together mm -hmm. in terms of the storyline. Yes. But this is really cool because each one of these are a full build. Correct. Like engine, interior, mm -hmm. paint, whatever body, all of it. Robert's attention to detail of what he wants the material to be in the interior and how he wants all the colors to tie in and the accents and how he wants it to drive. He's, he's very specific and he knows what he wants and making that come to fruition is, is an adventure and a blessing. Like I said, each one has their own kind of personality. Each one is a little different from each other. Even the EV, it's a different EV swap in each car. And then you've actually driven each one of these. Correct. Because you're, you're doing maintenance on them, you're just making sure they're running correct for the next owner. Yeah. I'm doing the test drives and, and finding the small things and fine tuning them, yes. So th that'll be great because we can actually take some of these cars out on the road later. Right? Yes, we can, yes. All right, I can't wait to drive them. This comes on a Chevy Silverado half ton truck. So you, they actually kept it Chevy, which is interesting. The fit and finish is really, really nice. Trying and to I fit all the OEM stuff back in there was a, a challenge. What's cool is it, it still has ABS. Mm -hmm. It still seems like it has all the creature comforts that this whole driveline pa uh, package offers, mm -hmm. including all the emission stuff. Yeah. So then in terms of boost, is it pretty much 
all stock? Yeah, 100% stock. So I think the direction with all of these was even the cost of maintenance of an older vehicle is just wild. So to have it, you can plug into it, see what's wrong with it, and the parts are readily available. You know, the maintenance is a lot lower on a newer drivetrain than it is something from 85 or 69 or 66. So that just needs miles and miles of maintenance. These are simplified, drive them, can be used as a daily driver. Yeah, and I, and I imagine that even with this crazy off-road configuration, it probably has maybe two, three times the miles per gallon compared yeah, to what even, it was. Even in this, this is this little motor is made for torque. Uh, and with the eight-speed transmission, it's just always in the power range, always in the boost level. The gearing is the number one thing that, that's the game changer for this vehicle. What was it, a three-speed originally? Uh, I believe this one was a three-speed originally. So then eight-speed, that's actually out, that's the one that was mated to this motor originally. Correct. Oh, okay. It just looks so wild. It's lifted quite a bit. Has some serious uh, Mickey Thompson tires on it. What are these? 33s? Oh, 30, 31s. Yeah. They look big because of the chassis, mm. but they are. This thing is wild. So crazy. Still utilizing the factory Chevrolet fuel tank for all the emissions, EVAP system, and. That is a huge tank. I believe it's a 33 gallon. Looks like the brakes have been refreshed. Yep. It probably needed it really bad. Yep, four this wheel is, disc brakes. This is really, really neat. So then what about the interior? So the interior on this one I cannot remember uh, which recycled material he did on this one. Uh -huh. I know that the, the vet, they did the mushroom. But this has, you know, all updated door panels, all the sound deadening. Still has the uh, Apple CarPlay from the Chevrolet that's oh. in here. It looks like a brand new vehicle, honestly. The upholstery is really, really nice. Very well done. Th love the steering wheel. <laughs> Thing yeah, it's hilarious. quite quite unique. It is very. It looks like a dinner plate. Yeah, ergonomic. Yeah, what do you, what is know. the word for it? <laughs> that is super cool. So then it has a new dash and all that. Yeah. So the dash we are going to make a small change to. The car actually has to have the OEM dash to take some of the codes off. So we're going to integrate it and actually make it look. OEM in the dash area. So that is one change that we're implementing. It's cool because uh, like all of these buttons are moved over from the Silverado. Yeah, the whole harness and everything out of the Silverado is used. Oh. On these new vehicles, every part of it has to be reading from each other to get any sort of feedback. Uh -huh. And then, that's super cool. So the e-bikes, in the back, uh, they're connected to this solar panel that's actually mounted on the roof. Yep, we have a, a CTEC inverter and battery system behind the seats. Yeah, the CTEC manages whether the, when the car is on, the alternator manages the battery system. When the car is off, the solar panel switches just like a, an RV. I've been shooting in Australia a lot and they love their utes. Yeah. For whatever reason, it just never really was that popular? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, well, it was maybe at one point, but it fell out of popularity. And we don't have utes anymore. So I think it's really cool to have, have an updated ute with updated modern turbo drivetrain. I think that's super cool. I love that. The concept for this was to take a very, very dirty, inefficient, polluting vehicle and make it modern and recycle it, mm -hmm. and put a new driveline in it, and now it's a new vehicle, but it also looks badass. Correct, kind of like an overland touch, can go anywhere, you know, a bug out vehicle style, but then you can go anywhere you want. You have the EV, bikes in the back, go take a mini adventure. It's, uh, 
kind of a nice balance of what it used to be to what it can be used for now. Mm -hmm. Well, so if you guys want to watch this episode, it's episode five of Downey's Dream Cars. Let's talk about this Mercedes. So I know this one is near and dear to his heart, huh? Correct. This was his mother's personal vehicle. And I think he has quite a few memories in it. But having the 1969 motor in it that, you know, starts to get tired, suspension starts to get tired, him taking it and doing a, a full refresh and putting a 6.5 liter Chevy diesel, turbo diesel motor in it that is what the Humvee and Chevy developed that can run off basically anything. So this is converted to biodiesel and you know you can run basically whatever whatever biodiesel in it and save a ton of money. Okay, we, so. we have to take a look at the engine. Oh yeah, let me this. pop the hood. And, and I have to say, it's funny, the three ICE vehicles that he built for the show kind of have the same tone. Correct. Uh, they're, they're all like a little bit matte or satin yep. and they all have like browns yep. and greens. All the earthy tones that he did in these and it's unique. I've never had to make multiple vehicles match when they're parked next to each other and I think he did a great job in selecting those tones. Do you know the reason why he rebuilt this in uh, with this color? Is there some kind of like significance? I think that you may have to watch the episode okay. to see that. Got it. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll watch the episode. So, so uh, full disclosure, I did go to the premiere where he actually hosted it, and it was super cool yep. to check that out. And yeah, actually, we watched it. Yeah, yeah, we watched the it episode. Together. We watched the truck yeah. episode together. So. This is insane. Look at this. Yep, this is all updated AC system. It's all digital, running off. You know, all the R134 Wait, updated so, the AC system. So it's a V8. Correct. Turbo diesel. Correct. And then they use these in the Humvee. Correct. This is out of a, basically a 95 Chevy 2500, but this is what either the turbo or non-turbo version was in the Humvee military vehicles. No wonder. So I, I drove this mm -hmm. earlier yep. to move it, and I couldn't believe how torquey it was. Oh, yeah. yeah the motor only revs out to like 5,000 RPM, but all of the power's at 1,500 to 2,000. It's all the torque. It's, it's incredible that it fits so well. Yeah. But, so what, what was it in here originally? Was it a inline six? This one was the inline six. This was not the 4.5 liter. Got it. So inline so. six diesel. Oh, no, it was this, a gas. this was a gas. Okay, inline six. But it's amazing to me that there was enough room to fit this huge V8 in it. Yep, same engine bay that fits the big 4.5 V8. Uh, so these came in a, a few different options of the 280 chassis. There's a lot of Mercedes stuff still left, like all the braking system oh, yes. and, huh. So then what about the transmission? The transmission in this is a 4L60 that has a shift kit in it and built trans, the full controller. So it reads the torque from the speed, the gear ratio, everything to shift at the proper points. It's all tunable, and selectable. It, it's all like made it to the Mercedes shifter and everything like that. Yes. So the thing that they changed in the episode was they, they did a full K member, basically out of similar to a Camaro. So it is tubular upper lower arms in this, switches all the geometry for the steering and allows the new rack for power steering. Oh, okay. That just kind of updates the suspension then? Oh, yes. Uh. So full up updated front, reworked rear suspension on this. This actually is a, a very nice champagne color underneath this wrap. So it was a really nice car before this kind of felt wrap that's on here. But I love all the tones from the chrome to the soft tones of the tan. Uh-huh. Oh, what's going on in the back here? So this is the fast fuel system for the filtration for the diesel. Uh, here's the dual batteries that are back here, then an extra car cover, seat cushions, spares, kind of everything's been reworked. Okay, so then how does it work? You just put any oil from... No, nope, like this is biodiesel. 
Okay, is what so, it's mainly set up for. So it can be updated to kind of a vegetable oil or whatever, but it would ha need a tank heater for that. Uh -huh. So this is mainly just a biodiesel. So you have setup. to go to like a biodiesel station. Look what I found from from this, dude. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. It's, this is a real Hot Wheels. Yeah, I had no idea it was powered by. Uh, how many liters is this? Six point six point five. Six point five. Yeah. So then, how much power and torque does it make? This one, it'll since it's not a updated turbo or anything. I think this makes four hundred foot pounds. You at really like feel it. Though. Idle. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> let's check out. Uh, let's check out the interior. Whoa! This thing is so nice. There, let me get out of it. I really like it. Yeah, this is, these old seats feel like you're sitting on like a nice plush couch. They're just so comfortable. So all of this stuff was redone then? Yes. Wow. So the what? door panels, everything is all original, just kind of reworked. It's cool to think that Robert rode in this as a kid. Yeah. Getting shuttled around by his mom. That is, that is neat. It's so, it's so clean. It's like a brand new vehicle, really. Yep, and in each one of these, he uh, put his little signature in here, put a sticker in the signature. We made these. Oh, let me check that out from this CNC side. CNC panels. Let me check that out. So in, in each one of these, what were you saying? So he did his own signature. Okay. In each, and then we CNC'd plaques for each of them that show you which episode matches the keep the key C and C. Oh, so this is episode grid. two. This is. Uh, so, but in this, you know, we have the way to start. Yeah. I'll turn down the fan, but this is all updated digital AC. This oh. is all now Bluetooth, retro sound, stereo system. Everything is updated as far as <laughs> making this thing roadworthy. It's great. Fun to drive. That is so neat. Yep, everything on the gauge works. So he's he's driving this one again, and he he drove it a couple weeks ago, and kind of sad that he's uh, <laughs> sweepstaking, putting in the sweepstakes because he would definitely want to keep this. Yeah, what a what a great vehicle. I like it. Okay, so this one we'll definitely take out on the road. Yes, I can't wait to drive this again because I moved it earlier and I was already surprised. I had no idea what was in it. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, without knowing, it's the torque is surprising. Okay. All right, so then another vehicle that I don't know too much about, um, a Buick Riviera. 1966. So I've seen a lot of these done up as like hot rods, low riders, mm -hmm. you know, pinstriped really nice with nice wheels lowered usually. This is a very different direction that I haven't seen before. It's like tan looking, I guess. Yeah, it's kind of a, a peach color, I yeah. call it. Interesting, very interesting colors. So then what's the story behind this one? So this one on the episode, they went to switch it to a Chevy hybrid, which is a half electric half LS and they ran into some difficulties and it turned out to be just a very fuel efficient LS that is in it uh, with another 4L transmission. This thing is a land yacht. It, it is so huge. You know, I never thought in my life I would ever get one of these and now I drive it and I'm like, I'm, I, I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's such a big boat and it holds the road and it reworks suspension. It doesn't float as much as it did before and it's amazing how small a LS looks. Oh yeah. In this engine bay. The original motor was just, you know, six miles a gallon, <laughs> no matter how you drove it. So to put something that makes it roadworthy again, in my opinion, because it makes sense to drive. So it really puts these back into production, shall I say. What LS is this? So they used a 5.3 base that was the hybrid system like in the Tahoe. Uh, this one's a Gen 4, uh, late Gen 4. And we did, it had DOD and we had to rework the lifters and make it 
back to top notch. So then it it probably makes probably about double the horsepower this thing originally had. I think it makes less. Oh really? It makes less horsepower than the than the big one, just by a little, but it gets four times, five times the gas mileage. Mm. It's just a lot more efficient. Yeah. And then, but then again, it's the same thing with switching the gearing. Uh, you know, once you switch the gearing in it, just like a bicycle, it's it's still faster. It, yeah, still faster. So than the what, original. What transmission or what gearing? It's still a four L, so it's a four speed. Um, then rework the rear diff, kind of switch the ratio for the tire size, and it, it's pleasant to drive. You didn't drive this one up. No. Uh, but fires up, updated AC is a huge thing in these. You know, in each of these vehicles, making heater, AC, proper climate control, all the, all the problems these older vehicles had, you know, interior falling apart. Robert really did a good job of having a touch of all the recycled materials in, in each one trying to be efficient. The this fold down is, headlights. This is the coolest part of the oh, whole yeah. vehicle. I think it's so cool that it has fold down headlights. All of the cars have an LED light conversion that make it, uh, you can see at night <laughs> when you're yeah. driving a speed. Before, before you could drive like 50, before you felt like you were overdriving the lights. So everything in this works, AC, all of it. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. <laughs> this is of the era, huh? It is. The beads. So this is episode three, if you guys want to watch the full episode. So without a doubt, my favorite feature of this are the hidden headlights. I think it's super cool. It just changes the look of the vehicle. <laughs> that is so neat. <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.